How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. If you hear a screaming child downstairs for the next hour, it's my daughter. She hit her wall today. Mommy's been uh, down on uh, vacation for the last two days, and she finally hit her wall trying to calm her down, but... uh, Babysitter's having a rough time. So I apologize in advance if you uh, hear Hanalei for the next hour. Anyway, it's Wednesday here on this program. We got a lot to get into here today. Oh, do we ever. Did you know that Rick Steiner was kidnapped last night? I don't even know where to begin. But yes, we're going to talk about NXT 2.0 and a lot of other news as well because there's actually some big news. We've got uh, the Raw after WrestleMania, largest audience for the show since January of 2021 in over a year. Largest audience for the show on Monday. They had a huge first hour by Raw standards. We're going to tell you about the ratings for the Raw after WrestleMania. It was a big success. We'll see where it is, obviously, a month from now, but uh, that was the... uh, that was the Monday numbers. We got uh, AW Dynamite tonight. And in fact, we have qualifying matches for the Owen Hart Foundation Men's and Women's Tournament. And uh, in the men's tournament, it will be Samoa Joe in his Dynamite debut against Max Ca- This poor Max Caster. Ah, oh, just one horrible beating after another. But uh, that's tonight. We'll give you the full lineup for the rest of the show as well. We got updates on Cody Rhodes coming off Monday. Gunter! Talks about his uh, his weight loss and his name change and uh, his focus on nutrition. So we got that to talk about here today. And New Japan is coming up this weekend, and we got a big guest on today, literally and figuratively. We'll tell you about it after the break. Wrestling Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembravivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. We got a lot of news to get into here today. And don't even think I'm not reviewing NXT 2.0. In the final segment of the show, however, Big Damo is going to be on the show here today. The former Killian Dane. He will be wrestling for New Japan this coming Sunday night. And you want a mean guy match? Have I got a mean guy match for you? Big Damo versus Tomohiro Ishii. They'll be tearing up on Sunday in Hollywood. Wish I could be there, but I can't. I'm getting right into NXT, so we got to get going because this is the shortest segment we've got today because I got a lot to say, and I may may need more time. So uh, it opened up with uh, Gunter coming out as Braun Breaker is doing a promo, and this crowd is just, I don't know what's up with this crowd. This crowd, I'm, I'm over this crowd, you know. Cameron Grimes came out later in the show after he won the title for his father who had passed away. And half the crowd chants, you deserve and the other half chants, no, he doesn't. <laughs> his dad died and he won the title for his father. And we're doing the no, he doesn't anyway, whatever. And he's a baby face. So Braun Breaker's out there and he's getting all these chants and everything. And out comes, uh, out comes Gunter. And I'm like, oh my God, I cannot wait to see this feud. Holy smokes, this is going to be awesome. They announced a match for tonight. In the main event. So I figured, well, you know, maybe we'll have a run in or whatever. So then we had the Creed Brothers versus Imperium. And they're having this match. And uh, all of a sudden, in the middle of the match, uh, Fabian Eichner just walks out on Marcel Bartel. Like, there was no spot. There was no nothing. It's like he broke up a pin. And then he walked out. And Marcel Bartel is all by himself. And he gets beaten. So I don't know what's going on there. Then we had uh, the two masked assailants. Uh, they uh, that have been messing with the creeds. They jump them after the match, and they unmask. And the announcers are like, "Oh my God, look who it is!" But they don't tell us who it is. And then, uh, and then uh, the other one. I, don't, I remember who started and who ended. But the other guy goes, "I know those guys. They're from NXT UK." I'm like, "Yeah, who are they?" And finally, they spit out. It's pretty deadly. But I think both guys forgot who they were, and someone in the, had to like tell them over the headset because it was forever before they told us who they were. So Pretty Deadly has debuted. They will be uh, squaring off with the Creeds here. 
So then we had uh, Cameron Grimes coming out, and uh, as noted, he does his promo, and he's all emotional about his father's passed away, and the crowd's heckling him, half of them. And Solo Sokoa comes out, and he wants a shot at the North American title, and uh, they're going to have a match, so that should at least be good. We had a bunch of Joe Gacy promos that sucked. I don't know what's going on, but they're Joe Gacy promos, so you know the you know the deal. Then we had uh, Dexter Loomis versus Duke Hudson. <laughs> So they had all these vignettes over the weekend, you know, which couple's hotter and everything like that. So they show us a couple of the clips. And the clips are funny because, like, I've said it a million times. I don't need to see Dexter Loomis do a lot of matches. But, like, his character in the vignettes he's in, fantastic. Well, now he's got to wrestle. And so him and Hudson are wrestling. And they both end up outside the ring. And the referee is is counting. And then uh, both women try to get their man into the ring. They both fail. Then all four of them fall down in an orgy-rific pile. But, like, they want you to think stuff like that, but they actually want to show it. So they cut away, they cut away so fast when they were all laying on top of each other. It's like, why are you even bothering if you're, like, afraid to actually show this? And so anyway, they cut away, and we never saw it again. They both got counted out. That was cool. Uh, then we had uh, Toxic Attraction versus Raquel and Dakota Kai. So for those of you, I don't know if you're uh, following this story or not, but... WrestleMania was Saturday. You guys remember that show? Do you remember night one of WrestleMania? The show that started at 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific Eastern for the, the pre-show and ended after midnight. So six hours if you wanted to watch the pre-show. And then they decided, well, earlier in the day, we're going to do this NXT Stand and Deliver show. So, you know, if you're on the West Coast like me, it started at like 9 or 10 a.m. And I'm like, I ain't getting up at 9 or 10 a.m. to watch this show. But you know what? Some people did. And more power to them. If you're that big a fan, you're going to watch, you know, a three-hour NXT show and then a six-hour WrestleMania show. Like, I'm not going to say anything bad about you. I could use a lot of loyal, a lot of loyalty like that on this program. But anyway, so if you did that, if you went out of your way to watch three hours of NXT before you watch six hours of WrestleMania, well, man, what you saw, you saw Braun Breaker fail... To win back the title against Tommaso Ciampa. You saw an NXT Tag Team Championship change where Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai won the tag team titles. Well, if you put all that work into watching that show, Monday night on Raw, Braun Breaker won the title on Raw. And then uh, the next night they did a rematch for uh, Toxic Attraction and uh, Raquel and Dakota and Toxic Attraction, they won those belts back. So... You were sure rewarded for watching that Stand and Deliver show. So, yeah, we got new tag team champions. They have won the belts back. Then we had uh, Tony D'Angelo doing a segment. AJ Galante. This poor bloke. All he had to do was a ceremony to crown uh, Tony D'Angelo a made man. This was too much. This segment was horrible. Forgot lines. Nobody cared. And then uh, he was heckled. And then uh, Tony D'Angelo was given a ring. He's now the Don of NXT. He's a made man. MSK cut promos about how they'd won the titles. And then uh, Grayson Waller's out there with his arm in his sling. And (laughs) the babyface tag champs challenged the guy with the broken arm to fight for the titles tonight. He's like, dude, I'm hurt. So they didn't do the match tonight. And uh, for those of you wondering, I hate to break kayfabe, but uh, Grayson Waller's not hurt. But it looks so bad that they're going to pretend he's hurt. So that's why he had the sling on. Which is good, because it looked like he killed himself. We had Nikita Lyons and Lash Legend. I mean, it wasn't horrible. I mean, the match with Vince McMahon at WrestleMania was like a thousand times worse. But I'll talk more about this in a moment. Santos Escobar and Legado del Fantasma ran into uh, Tony D'Angelo and AJ Galante, who are apparently a, a duo now, and... You know, they both essentially told each other to stay out of each other's business. And then the main event was Braun Breaker and Gunther, okay? And I was so excited to see this, like, headline uh, uh, takeover or whatever, whatever they call the takeovers now. And uh, I, I can't even believe I'm complaining about this, but they went in there, and they had a very good match, and they had a clean finish. Braun Breaker beat Gunther in the middle of the ring with his move, pinned him one, two, three. Now... Why am I complaining about this? Well, they gave this away on TV for free, 
as a setup for Braun Breaker's next challenger, Joe Gacy. The former Volter was a setup guy for Joe Gacy. That's going to be the feud and the long-term feud here. Joe Gacy has kidnapped, because we joke about it, but it's actually not a joke. There is a kidnapping on this show every other week. And this week, Rick Steiner has been kidnapped by Joe Gacy. That is the setup for this Braun Breaker-Joe Gacy feud that was set up by Braun Breaker just pinning Gunther in the middle of the ring in a random main event unadvertised on NXT 2.0. The only thing I got to say about this is uh, what the good thing about this match, besides the fact that it was good, was uh, you know Braun Breaker is, is going to be somebody. And uh, what I like is he's being thrown into the deep end. Because, you know, this was not something that Braun Breaker and Gunther practiced for a week. Like, Gunther's in there, he's calling spots left and right. So I think that this was kind of like a, I don't know, I I shouldn't say last minute. But, I mean, it was sort of last minute because, you know, this whole thing on Monday was last minute. So, anyway, you know, he had to go in there and he had to do a... You know, call the match. I'm sure they went over some stuff, but this was call the match in the ring. Listen to Gunther. Do what he says. Get in there and actually work. Which, of course, is the opposite of what we saw with the Nikita Lions match. Nikita Lions and Lash Legend, like, they practiced their match probably for weeks. They got in there. You know, they they managed to pull it off. But you ain't going to learn to work like that. You're just going to be able to pull off a match on television. Which, you know, if that's all you want these two to do, that's fine. But Braun Breaker needs to learn how to work. And this match with Gunther, I mean, he was in there, and he's a better worker now after the match than he was before. So I like that aspect of it. We'll get Mike Sauce after the break. Talk more. Observer Live. Anything else? All right, Don't Mike, your it. thoughts on uh, NXT 2.0? Uh, it's, a, it's a, There's a lot of talent on that show, both a little bit seasoned and a lot of raw talent, obviously, with people like Braun Breaker and such. But uh, when they pulled back after he defeated Walter Clean, I just assumed Fabian Eichner would be standing there, you know, explaining where he went. You know, that would that would make some sense. OK, he just beat Walter Clean. We just had Imperium lose the tag titles. Uh, you know, it, it things are falling apart. But you know what? He lost his mind, went to the back and said, you know what, saw Rick Steiner there and decided to take him. I don't know. It would have made more sense, I think, than Joe Gacy. But I am not a seasoned CZW viewer. I'm not. I don't know if Joe Gacy did a lot of training at the CZW JoJo. I know a lot of people have come out of that, gone through it. The MJFs, a lot of people wrestled for CZW. I know he was a big part of that. I'm guessing, and I'm just I'm throwing this out there because I don't know. Maybe this is obviously they want Harland with Joe Gacy to try to learn something. Maybe this is a good thing for Braun Breaker. Again, I am not. Well, he's a fine worker, but but that's he's not not, Walter. I know, and that's I to me Braun Breaker working with Eichner and being involved in it with having some friends go after that whole group to me would be better for Braun Breaker. But maybe again, this won't be the end of the world. But they the problem is it's just the Gacy character, and I I don't know. To the NXT crowd, is it over? I mean, that's some no. of the metrics on some of the stuff that WWE is doing and doubling down on. It's like, you see, in some cases, it's worked. You know, Tony D'Angelo, people took to, you know, and he's been able to kind of hold up to his end of the own in the Ciampa feud. We've had Braun Breaker. We've had some successes there, but we've had some things that they have obviously done that keep they keep doubling and tripling down on that I don't think are very good at all. And Again, I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of up in the air on this because I know at the end, Braun Breaker should be standing victorious, and I'm sure he'll do it, and I'm sure he'll do something impressive to Harlan to throw him. But, you know, I'm just kind of hoping against hope here because I really don't know about Gacy and the character and whether this – people are going to care when the match is actually taking place. No. That's but maybe they have not. to maybe have to train him to do sports entertainment storylines, and so he's got to have this feud before he can go up to the main roster. It's so silly because that's where he should be. I just don't understand why you don't make that move. He's lost to Dolph already, and 
you just bring him up there as a surprise and he starts throwing people, whether it be on Raw or whether it be on SmackDown, especially with some of the moves that they've made. It's still, again, he it's a continuation from yesterday. I just don't understand why he's there to do that when he could work with so many people on the main roster, go over them, and and, and they could build that. But who am I? We're off to WrestleMania, largest audience for the show since January of 2021, which, by the way, was a special Legends Night episode. So if you go back, well, I guess uh, night after WrestleMania is special. Best 18-49 to 49 number since the start of the 2021 football season. 2.10 million viewers, 0. 0.63 at 18 to 49. Numbers far more impressive when you consider the show went against what could be one of its toughest nights of the year for competition with the NCAA Men's Championship game going head to head with the second half of Raw. Sled Hour 1 being the highest rated, when of late it has been Hour 2. 19.3% drop, Hour 1 to 3, which is usually the sign of a bad show, but in this case it's a sign of a Basketball game. The uh, North Carolina-Kansas game, which aired on TBS, TNT, and True TV, 17.05 million viewers. And are you ready for this? Raw did a .63 in 18-49, which is stupendous for Raw, so to speak, .63. This uh, North Carolina-Kansas game did a... 4.72 in 18 to 49. A 4.72 in 18 to 49. Last Holy words, baby. golly. Two traditional power ass teams. Hey. You guys realize? Uh, no surprise there. Was hey, no listen. Surprise. Listen, I don't think you guys get it. Raw, okay, is normally in the top 10. And sometimes it's in the top five, and sometimes it's like one, two, three, okay? It rarely comes near a point six three. This game did a four, not a point four, did a 4.72 in 18 to 49. So the raw number is even more astounding. It's more stupendous when you think about it. 2.32 million viewers, first hour. 2.11 million second hour, and uh, 1.87 million in the third hour. So very, very good numbers. So TBS and uh, CBS, CBS and Turner Sports have this deal. They extended it out, I believe, here through 2032. The eight additional years of the contract when they signed this thing a couple years ago are worth 8.8 billion dollars nearly matching the value of the original 14-year deal which was 10.8 million billion signed in 2010 it is amazing what live sports will do and hey wrestling has the ability to continue to piggyback off of that so it's uh it's absolutely amazing absolutely amazing those numbers that are thrown there this person says normal folks don't watch this trash wrestling product you realize that raw and dynamite do very, very well in the top 50. So all those numbers I gave you, about 4.72 compared to Raw's 0.6, most every other show on television comes nowhere near a 0.63 either. So nobody's watching nothing compared to this basketball game. So we got uh, Dynamite tonight. Samoa Joe, Max Caster, men's tournament qualifier. Karushita, Julia Hart, women's tournament qualifier. Given this is a multi-week a tournament leading to the end of May, so multi-month. Why do we have qualifiers for the tournament? Why don't we just have one more round of brackets? But anyway, so we can we can push storylines. We're debuting Samoa Joe, and we got to figure out how brooding Julia Hart is in this match. Adam Cole, Christian Cage, tables match: Hardys versus Butcher and Blade, FTR versus the Young Bucks for the ROH Tag Team T Championships and the AAA Tag Team Championships, so uh, don't miss that one. Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz will all be appearing. And Tony Khan... Whoa. Tony Khan, on his busted open radio appearance on Wednesday, <laughs> made a point to say that he is, quote, going back to his ruthless roots when it comes to the lineup for Friday, and it will be a stacked-up show. So, uh, obviously, Rampage has not been doing great on uh, Friday night. 
to say the least. And, uh, you know, he's going to have to do that more. And I think they probably should. Look, Friday is the day that they're on. It's hard to move to a new day. It's hard to move to a new time and really be able to scratch something out. And apparently, you know, TBS and TNT are happy where it's at. But it has become the show for wrestling fans that if you're going to miss something from AEW, yeah, you're going to miss that over Dynamite. That's just the way it goes. But when you have the NHL playoffs, when you have the NCAA tournament, when you have all of these things that are playing with you, it may just be you really have to ebb and flow that show kind of around these big events. And then you have that stacked show after three weeks of not getting any attention at all. And you're looking forward at baseball coming up and all the other things that are on those properties. It's like, man, you really are going to have to dance around this because I, again, we've talked about the day. It's not moving off of that day. The best thing I think they can do is probably replay it in other places like True TV, like places like that. If you can spread AEW programming out all across the Turner networks, I think that would be great. But I, this is the only thing I think you can do is try to promote strategically around this stuff, and you better hope it hits. Gunter was asked by Wrestling Inc. what he's been doing to get in shape. I guess eat less. Gunter said, I always worked out a lot, but I would say for the first time, I have really focused on nutrition. These two guys, Marcel Bartel and Fabian Eichner, really pushed me. They're shredded. I've got to say, when I was a wrestling fan, I always liked the look of these solid heavyweights in Japan who had a little bit of a gut carrying around, just brawlers and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, you've got to do go with the times and evolve a little bit, and that's what he did. So for those of you that are too heavy trying to lose some weight gunter has advice for you eat less <laughs> which actually is part of it yes hey you know i was uh eating the I right to things. digress and everything like that but i always eat well and uh you know i was i was doing the old i can't say it was keto but it was pretty low carb and uh then one day i thought you know what i'm almost i'm almost actually it was because i was going to hawaii and so I, I decided, you know what? I'm not only going to eat like this, but I'm going to uh, I'm going to calorie count. I'm going to cut my calories a little bit. And uh, I just disappeared. I got down to 133. I got so skinny that I thought I could have a disease of some sort. So uh, I started eating again last couple of days, and I'm back up to 140. So uh, I don't think I have a disease. But anyway, the point is, if you eat less, you'll weigh less. It's my advice today. Me and old Walter, we're eating less together. Exercise, eat the right things. You know, and Walter's still a young guy too, and it's you know it's a good time to make a lifestyle change. He's you know going to be like thirty five, but you know he's with a lot of wrestling time, things like that. And I know there's people that will weight lift. For, look at Vince. Look at Vince at seventy six, but it's hard to carry around that kind of weight as you get older. Sure is. Back in a moment with Big Demo Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Very happy today to be joined by Big Damo here, who's got a big weekend coming up. Damo, how you doing? Doing very, doing very much. Oh boy, we just got a we just got a problem with the uh, connection. Try that again. How you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Promise not to swear. Is it working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, how you feeling after this weekend? You know, you had a couple matches down there in Dallas. How did uh, WrestleMania week treat you? And uh, how did Calvin Tankman treat you, a monster of a man to go head up with? It was uh, it was an incredible, incredible experience on the other side of the WrestleMania weekend. And uh, we're wrestling at 11 a.m. and then 2 a.m. at the same day was, uh, was certainly something new. <laughs> uh, my adrenaline peaking like multiple times per day. But... Uh, <laughs> Calvin Tankman was a lot of fun to, to wrestle. He's, a, he's an incredible talent. And uh, hopefully we can wrestle again at maybe like 7 or 8 o'clock at night. Might be a bit, uh, a bit more fun for both of us. <laughs> well, how do you do How This is a heck of a, a of a thing here because you had Calvin Tankman, but then on the other side you had War Horse. So <laughs> cer certainly a diverse, uh, certainly diverse body types to work against. What is that like on these weekends where, and I know you've been in WWE for a while, but, you know, on these weekends where you're facing multiple people, all of different sizes, 
and styles. Does it does it wear on you a little bit? Does it make it tough on you at all? Honestly, that's what it's all about for me because you're getting to tell different stories with, with different people. And like, if I was just to wrestle Calvin, Calvin Tankman like twelve times over two weeks for like it was like the WWE schedule, then uh, it would probably get very old very fast. And it's, just, it's a lot more fun when you're against somebody completely new 12 hours later. So, and uh, for me, obviously, having to, to get ready and get, get pumped for 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning was new. And uh, it was an absolutely incredible experience for me because everybody, uh, if you've met Warhorse or you've wrestled Warhorse, you've seen him wrestle, you know that uh, he's a little crazy. And uh, it's hard not to get excited when uh, he's running around like a mad person. You know, I, I got to ask this question because uh, I've been a fan forever, and you have as well, and all of us. And uh, I'm a small guy myself, and uh, sometimes I I watch. There's two different kinds of matches that involve big guys. Okay, there's either the two giants that face off against each other, and it's just two giant dudes pounding on each other. Or there's the opposite, which is the giant guy and the really small guy, and uh, the giant guy just kills the really small guy. And uh, every time I see either one of these matches, I can't decide which one I actually like better, because you know there's you know I don't I'm a small guy and all, but I, I, it'll never get old seeing some big dude kill some small guy. But at the same time, it'll never get old to see two big dudes get in there and just pound on each other. So as a big dude who has done both of these styles of matches, which do you prefer, another big dude or killing that little dude? It's hard not to always enjoy the, the David versus Goliath story because it's so obvious that it's in your face. Yes. But like for me, it's always down to like if the other person has any sort of skill, if they're a technician or a flyer or if they're a fellow big man who can go, then... That's all you want. Like all you want to see is somebody who's who's got something about them. And if you're against a fellow move, and they have a, a little bit about them, because if they're slower than me, then it's not going to be great. <laughs> I want to be the slow one. Yes. Now, now, what are your what are your your stats? Uh, we can do either legitimate or pro wrestling stats, but in general, your height and weight. So you mean when you say legitimate, you mean that that's always because I mean obviously the. Sure. So and, I'm, I'm six two and I am twenty two stone. So six, what, what is that in six pounds? Six two and twenty two <laughs> stones. Three ten, something like that. Uh, I think I, I think I got my stones wrong because I don't think you're four hundred pounds. But anyway, three oh eight. Three oh eight. Three oh eight. Okay, thank you. Mike. Three oh eight. Tell people that I'm four hundred pounds, but I, like, listen. People believe you. That's all that matters. That's true. So the reason I ask is because there is a there is a, a big match coming up this weekend, Vermont and Hollywood. It is you and Tomohiro Ishii. Okay. Now a lot of people that have seen Ishii on television but have not seen him live, he looks like you know Godzilla. He looks like a giant, but in reality he's not. He's he's like five five. So when you see the poster of you and Ishii together, it looks like it's going to be the battle of, of the two giants. But really, he only carries himself like a giant. He's not really a giant, but he certainly works like a giant. And I know that this is a very important match for you, and it was a very important match for you a few years ago. Tell us about Ishii. Honestly, I think like I was the same as yourself when I first like was watching him on you know YouTube or whatever else when I was trying to get as many matches as I could. Um, I remember thinking, oh, this, this guy, this guy must be, must be massive, whatever. But it turns out he's just got massive heart, and he can actually throw anybody around. Um, because when I got up next to him, and I, yes, I'm much bigger than him, but uh, the, the problem is, you know, it's his job to put me down, and he, he certainly gave it his best shot. <laughs> uh, but you know, a few years ago when we wrestled, it was awesome because he, he doesn't have great English, and I've got literally no Japanese. So for us to go in there and just just get at each other. Uh, it was honestly one of the best experiences of my career up to that point because I, I was literally getting in there working with somebody with so much experience, you know, who's been in there with literally the, the best there's ever been. Um, and, you know, I'm learning how he moves, how he, how he, he does his thing. Uh, and I'm doing my very best to cooperate or, or be uncooperative, depending on, <laughs> on what it is. And uh, honestly, it, it, was, it was so much fun. That match, you know, it helped launch me and, Changed my my path at the time in 2015, so it's great to, to meet him again seven years later with what I've learned, and I'm looking forward to skinning him alive all over again. 
How much of a influence was Japanese wrestling on you? Because I know over in, in the UK and in, in Ireland and Scotland and everything, WWE has been such a, a massive presence. But you started breaking into the business in around the mid-2000s, correct? When Dragon Gate and Noah and, and a lot of things started to filter over a lot more. Was Japan always a goal for you? Were you heavily influenced by, by the Japanese scene and, and got into all that? Absolutely. I mean, I, I think like I, as the world gets smaller with, you know, with the Internet helping a lot, like we used to, you know, trade tapes back in the day. Like, is that a copyright issue? I don't know. I said, <laughs> do you ever use LimeWire? <laughs> <laughs> and then as, as the Internet like brought everything closer, you know, suddenly we were able to watch everything. And then in the UK, we, we actually had the wrestling channel, which meant you know, for the first time I was getting exposed to the likes of Noah and everything. So suddenly... I'm getting, like, Masala's almost entire career. I'm getting Kibashi. You know, I'm seeing Kenta's rise. And, you know, it's just so, like, Jun Akiyama is one of my favorites. I love Sayama. Like, he, he came over to Britain a bunch of times as well, and I got to see a lot of his matches. Uh, later on, you know, I, I, I got to, to go back and, and see what he was doing with the likes of Marty Jones and whatever else. So, you know, I was quite influenced personally by British wrestling. Uh, obviously, American wrestling would be stupid. Uh, you know, of course, we're all influenced by that. But, you know, the, the likes of Finley and... and, and Pete, judo pete roberts and stuff like that have been massive influences for me as, as a worker but like japanese wrestling i think that you know we kind of adopted japanese wrestling a little bit into our own culture and um, absolutely in, in american wrestling over the last 10 10 15 years you can see it like playing as day now and any any show you watch now everybody has there's, there's kind of this little element of of what we've picked up from there and honestly for me personally like you know the, the 2000s it was, was you know the late uh, the late 90s, you know, because I was a big WCW fan, you know, you kind of started to learn what New Japan was through through that way and with their cooperation. And then later on, you know, with the internet, I was able to, to find out more about, like, New Japan, All Japan, Noah, even Zero One. I, I got really into Zero One. I actually worked um, with Zero One with a company that I, I helped uh, I helped work in, in Britain. Um, so, you know, there was just all these amazing talents over the years who I've, I've been very blessed to be able to spend time with and wrestle with and such and such not. And that it's hard not to be influenced by it. And like, you know, I'll uh, I'll end up like at an airport randomly with uh, Eddie Kingston, and we're sitting watching the best of Kawada. You know, that's <laughs> just kind of what happened. <laughs> oh man, what a what a time at the airport that is. <laughs> and of I course, I just everybody else to see these two large men hunkered over this small phone. Yeah, um, <laughs> watching some dude Martin drop another dude on his head. <laughs> <laughs> now, what about what about the Ultimate Warrior? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I'm sure when I was a kid, uh, when I was, you know, five years old, well, yep. the warrior was still was Sting, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, sadly, as I got a little older, it became less about warrior and, uh, and more about guys. I don't know if I would say sadly, Damo. <laughs> I would say that you made the right choice to not uh, model your career and your work after the ultimate warrior. I don't know. Like, listen, I think that there's a thing about this team these days. Everybody seems to be into it, you know? Maybe I would. Maybe I'd be in better shape if I was a bigger Warrior fan. Who knows? Well, hey, there there is that as well. There is that as well. <laughs> now uh, I like the uh, the bald head. What happened? Uh, uh, time. <laughs> time. Well, yeah, Honestly, that that does happen. In fact, we got a picture of you on the the show here with hair, so it's a little <laughs> jarring to see the uh, that that lovely mane of hair that you once had. But uh, I like the bald head look. Thank you. I, I really appreciate that. I think, uh, you know, it was, for me personally, it was like I wanted to shave my head for about two years because I think actually I go all the way back to war games and that's when I first realized, okay, I'm, uh, I'm maybe uh, going a bit thin on top there. never realized it was that bad, but okay. And then as the, uh, you know, the, the lighting gets better, the cameras get better, it's suddenly a bit more obvious to me. And uh, <laughs> I remember I actually pitched before I, I uh, went up to SmackDown, I, I pitched, listen, can we maybe do something where, you know, shave my head or whatever. Uh, and they were like, oh, we could maybe have, like, Lars Sullivan, like, you know, shave your head, bald, whatever. Uh, it never really came to fruition. And, uh, you know, fast forward a couple of years, and when finally uh, when finally it was time, it was probably about two days later, and I was like, okay, I'm going to go for it now, because it's the only thing I could focus on. I couldn't, I don't really like watching myself wrestle anyway. I, I kind of forced myself out of, out of habit. But uh, the only thing I could focus on was, was my dome. So oh, <laughs> it was the worst. Was trying to get rid of it. The worst. <laughs> Now, now you're obviously working. Uh, are you what? 
what is your New Japan? I mean, obviously you've been watching it for a long time and Japanese wrestling for a long time, and you've you've worked with the Shii before and you've got him this weekend. But, I mean, there's a lot of great guys that not only are in New Japan, but New Japan is working with so many places that, like, there's a million uh, potential opponents for you. Do you have certain dream opponents where it's like, oh, my God, now I might actually have a chance to work with Tadahashi or Okada or whoever it's going to be? Absolutely. Listen, like I'd be a fool of it and say Okada would be number one on, on any list that I'd ever have. I got very lucky. I got to wrestle Tanahashi. I got to wrestle Nakamura and Ishii you know, with Rev Pro. But I, honestly, I'm looking at Okada. I'm looking at Will Ospreay. I'm looking at Shingo. These are the guys who I want to get in there with. I want to I want to be in front of the thousands of people in Japan, and I want to prove that I'm every bit as good as them. And that's that's the thing. It may <laughs> it's hard not to watch these guys and think these are literally the best in the world right now. And, I need to get to that level. Now, you know, you, you spend a lot of time in, in WWE, and, and I don't know why it is. I think because WWE has always been so isolationist that uh, you just sort of have this idea that, well, if you're working for WWE, you're not actually watching any other wrestling, which, of course, is ridiculous. But, uh, you know, what did you? Were you keeping, you know, during the time that you were there, were you watching all of the major New Japan shows? And, and you know, obviously, AEW eventually got started as well. But, I mean, what were you watching during that period? Well, the best part was, like, New Japan World came about. So it was one of the first people probably to sign up for it. Yeah. <laughs> so I had it for years. Um, and then, obviously, like, it's hard not to watch everything because I think one of the things for me is, you know, the uh, because you're around wrestling so much, it literally becomes your, your everything. I think I, I was doing my best not to watch Raw and SmackDown, and I was trying to watch everything else because you wanted to try and be, you know, inspired by what was going on in the world. Um, and for me, personally, I have so many friends, like, all across the world. So, like, I'm trying to keep up with the likes of ICW Progress, Rev Pro, as well as trying to watch everything across the pond. You, you're trying to watch what's going on in the, the, the independents, or you're trying to watch what's happening with AEW. You, I always tune in to see like which of my friends are on Impact or whatever else. Uh, and then, boom, you see that New Japan's created New Japan Strong, so you're like, wow, I need to figure out what's happening there. Um, and it's like, the beauty is we're in this situation where there's just so much available to us, whereas years ago when I was a kid, like, you had nothing available to you, so you literally had to do your best to try and go out of your way to get stuff. Now it's there for you, so if you're not watching it, you're an idiot. Well, hold that thought. Back in a moment with more, everybody. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Big Demo joining us here. He's got a big show coming up on Sunday. New Japan in Hollywood. It's uh, Demo and Ishii in a battle for the ages. And uh, we got to get some plugs in here, Demo, and hopefully we can get you back on the show again because all we did during the break was talk wrestling. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> Absolutely. But we didn't even get a chance to cover off Eric Young. We'll be here all day. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we talked during the break about Eric Young. For those of you that don't know, Eric Young is is uh, pretty much the greatest, whether you know it or not. He actually is. So someday we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. But let's get some uh, let's get some plugs in. What do we got for Twitter and everything like that? Pro Wrestling Tees. So absolutely everything is, is at Demo Mackel. You can get me on Twitter, Instagram, Pro Wrestling Tees. It's Demo Mackel, all one word. At Damo Mackel, D A M O M A C K L E. And uh, yeah, as noted, there's uh, everything you need to know is up there. There's uh, links to upcoming shows, there's links to the pro wrestling tees. I see we got uh, three new shirts out here Damo <laughs> Celtic Chaos Beast and Big Damo's Irish Red. You can check all of those out at Pro Wrestling Tees. And as noted, this coming Sunday, uh, New Japan Mutiny. At the Vermont Hollywood. Coming up Sunday, you can get your tickets now. Uh, Big Damo is going to be facing Tomohiro Ishii, a bunch of other matches as well. I think our own Filthy Tom's going to be there. Lots of great stuff. So, Damo, I want to wish you the best of luck with New Japan. Thank you so much for doing the show, and let's do it again sometime. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me, and I'll, I'll see you guys very soon. Best of luck with the show. Yep, thanks so much. And, of course, thanks, everybody, for listening. we got news breaking, everybody. Uh, Nash Carter has been fired. Uh, we'll have more at WrestlingObserver.com and some other stories breaking today as well. So uh, that's it. we got to go, though. Talk to you again next time. Wrestling Observer Live.